Kiwitech removing a three wire temporary fence using the vehicle pack. Here's our temporary three wire fence. And to remove it, we're going to drive our bike and park so we're facing just at 45 degrees to the fence line, facing up the fence. We'll turn off our bike, make sure it's the park brakes applied and move our three wire vehicle pack into position. We'll start with the top spool and unclip it from the end assembly. Bring it towards our three wire vehicle pack. Make sure the wire is coming out the top and slide it all the way on. We'll take the poly wire and put it through the first loop of the top guide. We'll now disconnect our middle spool Bring it towards our three wire vehicle pack and slide it onto our chuck. Important to note that the chuck is in the loose position. So the chuck nut has been turned anti-clockwise to reduce tension from the chuck. When we remove the last spool, we'd also, we will also collect our end assembly posts. Alternatively, we could use the release hooks to connect the spools directly to the fence itself. We'll slide on our last spool for the bottom wire, take the wire through the guide. The spools should have an equal gap between them. We start the fence using release hooks in this case, so we can trigger those using a series of short hard tugs. It's important that the wire goes slack between each pull. So it's a hard pull under tension, slack, hard wire, slack, hard wire, slack, hard wire, and it's released. We'll repeat this for the last wire. With all three wires released, we'll now do up our chuck so that it holds all three spools securely. This allows us to wind in the wire without any slippage. This will avoid undue damage to the chuck. We move the pack from the fencing position to the winding in position so it can pivot. This also allows the chuck handle to turn. We release the lock and we begin to wind in our poly wire. Slowly at first, take of any slack that may have been generated when we triggered the release hooks. As we wind, we move the pack to left and right so we get an even wrap onto the spools. The pack is geared four to one. This allows us to wind in a long fence very quickly. It's important to wind at steady speed Winding too quickly can cause the polywire ends to become tangled. As you near the end of the polywire, let's say the last 50 to 60 metres, it's a good idea to put a post in the ground or a tread in the ground at an angle to create a little bit more friction to ensure you can continue to get a tight wrap onto the spools. You also need to slow down the pace of winding as you become, as you get near the end of the poly wire. This is because there's less resistance and less friction. You may need to use your hand with care at the end just to guide the final poly wire onto the spools. The loose ends can be tidied by tucking them and pulling the spool tight, pulling the poly wire tight onto the spool itself. Alternatively, they can be poked through one of the holes and just tie it off using a simple knot. We now move the three wire pack back into the travel position, first locking the spools. And we twist it back on to the spool keeper. We place the rack in the fencing out position and we drive up the fence line, stopping each post to collect them and place them into our rack. The posts are placed into the rack so that the clips face towards each other, clips facing inwards, pedals facing outwards, and as we stack our rack we alternate which side we stack the posts on. This ensures we can fill the pack and keep and get 30 posts in it. This slow motion shows us the technique, reaching below the, the top clip 
bring it around in a circular motion and sliding it straight in the rack.